Last week, undisputed minimum weight champion Sanisa Estrada surprisingly announced her retirement from the sport of boxing. Today she sits with me for an exclusive interview to discuss her decision and her future plans. Sanisa, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much, Christina, for having me. I'm, I'm just um, happy to be sitting down with you, someone who I really look up to and really just admire as, as a friend and as a woman in the sport of boxing. So I wouldn't want to sit down with anybody else. Now that the decision's official and now that it's out there, how do you feel first and foremost? You know, it's, it's not easy to talk about, which is why I didn't want to talk about it with anyone else other than you and other than top rank exclusively because it's, it's difficult, you know, it's a difficult decision. I didn't just wake up one morning and say, I feel like retiring, you know, it's something that has been, it's, there's been a lead up to it for the past few years. So now that I finally am retired, I feel very at peace and happy. And it's a feeling that I haven't felt in a very long time. You knew the day you were getting ready to make your retirement from the sport of boxing public. What was going through your mind? What was that moment like when you sent it away and it was out there to the world? I was ready to do it. I just wanted to, I wanted to just move on. You know, I can't move on without everyone knowing that I'm retired. So it was just a moment where I was just, just ready to just hit that post button and just let everybody know, you know, and I was with uh, my friend Janine in her house and we're neighbors. So I went over in the morning and she's like, okay, are you ready? And I'm like, yeah, I think so. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. And uh, we screamed and then boom, I hit send. <laughs> and so uh, the day, my day had to go on. I had such a busy day that day and I had an acting class to go to. It was a scene study class. So I had to rehearse my lines and make sure that I memorized it and I was on point. Um, I didn't want to let down my scene study partner. And as soon as I got to class, my acting coach was like, oh my God, I saw your post. Are you okay? And I just went, ah! <laughs> and I burst out crying. And she's like, oh my God. And we hugged for like five minutes. And she's like, you know, if there's anywhere to cry and let all the emotion out, it's right now, right before you do your scene. And she's like, it's okay. Like, you don't want to do it and you want to just sit out. And I'm like, I'm like, no. I'm fine, like I'm gonna do it. And uh, I did it and me and my partner uh, knocked it out and it was awesome. But it's just, it's just like, you know, life, that just tells you life goes on, you know. It was an overwhelming morning for me, still having to focus on all the things I had to do that day. I didn't look at my phone for hours. I didn't read any text messages or uh, DMs or anything like that. I still really haven't responded to a lot of people. I just needed that time for myself and I went on with my day and I felt, uh, I felt just happy, happy and, and, and peaceful. When did you know that you were done? Um, like I said, there was, a, there was definitely a lead up to it the past few years. Um, I've been boxing for 23 years and <laughs> people from the outside looking in and, and fans and everybody else in the sport look at a fighter and think everything's okay. You know, 23 years is a very, very long time. And it was 23 years of a, a struggle to, to make it and to get to where I am today. I spent my whole childhood and teenage years, and of course, as a young adult as well, fighting and striving to get to this point, thinking that I was gonna be so happy <laughs> and, and so excited, and thinking that the money is what I wanted. That's, that's definitely, that's the goal for all female fighters is to, for so many years I did it because I loved it, whether I was making money or not. But of course, every fighter works so hard to get to the point because they want to make great money. And you think when you get to that point, you're going to be happy and everything's going to be great. But when I got to that point, I still wasn't happy. And I knew that, um, Mentally, I couldn't, I couldn't, I just couldn't handle it anymore. It was 20 years of, um, I didn't want to cry. <laughs> 20 years of, 
of depression and anxiety. More than happiness, there was happy moments throughout my career, but being, feeling depression for so long, for so many years, like mentally, you just hit a breaking point where you're like, I just can't do this anymore. And physically as well, with uh, certain injuries and um, my back being the biggest injury and still fighting through that and um, fighting through the pain and things like that. And then um, having surgery on my finger last July, um, which is why I wanted to go straight into the undisputed fight after my surgery. I didn't want a tune-up fight because I thought to myself, I don't even know if I can physically handle a tune-up fight because my hand's not even going to be 100%. So I, I knew it in my heart and in my mind that that was going to be my last fight. And it, it just took me a long time to, to be okay with that. I want to go back for a second on the struggles that you had with the depression and anxiety because I feel like so many athletes, maybe a little more now, are able to come to the forefront and be able to talk about that. Did you ever and have you been able to kind of tap into what the source of that was and how were you able to kind of overcome that and get to the decision where now you're like, okay, I know that this chapter is closed and I'm able to now turn the page on, on those type of feelings now that I'm not going to fight anymore. Yeah, I think that's something that I ignored for so long and I try to hide it for so long. And I always thought to myself, that's, that's sissy stuff, you know? If you're depressed or you know, you're feeling anxiety and depression, you just keep fighting, keep fighting through it. Don't tell anybody, you know? There's a lot of, a lot of times I thought people won't understand, you know? If boxing is uh, 95, 9% mental, 1% physical. You could be 100% physically ready for a fight, but if you're going into the ring not mentally there, that can take away everything. The physical part will be gone. It took me a, a, a long time to realize that, to, to admit to myself that there was all this depression just breaking me down, and it's because of everything, the struggle of wanting to be a world champion, the struggle of wanting to make good money, the struggle of just everything of, that comes with being a fighter, but not just a fighter, but a female fighter. It was very draining mentally. And there were times, I never talked about this. Um, I would say my last three to four fights after my fights, I would, um, before getting back into training camp for the next fight, <sighs> sorry, Sorry, I didn't want to cry so much. Fuck. <laughs> it's a big step to be able to discuss it and let it out and know that you're going to be moving forward on your own terms from this space. So I understand the emotions that you're going through in this space and you appreciate your openness and willingness to share because I really truly feel like your story is going to help the next generation of athletes and female fighters and what they're going through. And I know that's something that means a lot to you. Definitely. Yes. And yeah, to answer your question, um, as I said, it took me, um, it took me a long time to admit to myself that boxing was breaking me down mentally when it comes to depression. And I think when I really realized that and thought to myself, okay, like, you got to make a decision here because this is killing you. It's making you just not be yourself. Was, as I said, the last three to four fights, after my fights, before going into training camp, 
I would <laughs> drink like a bottle of wine to myself like every night just so I can fall asleep easier and not think about <coughs> just not think about the decision and not think about being depressed or feeling anxiety and I would do that like every single night, <laughs> almost every night. And it I wasn't even like going out and like partying or anything. I was just doing it by myself. I didn't want to be around anybody. So I was doing it alone at home. Um, and that, ha that was going on for a while until I got back into training camp. And then when I was in training camp, the last three to four fights, I was still kind of doing the same thing. Not, not as bad because of course, I, I knew I needed my body to be 100% and not, not drink alcohol, but I feel like it was, I was doing it because I was trying to just take the pain away. And I was also <sighs> smoking weed too as well, just to feel, not feel that anxiety and depression. And it just, I thought to myself one day, like, okay, like, this is gonna, this is gonna, this can get worse. This is gonna lead you down a dark path. So, I, um, I kept thinking, I kept, like, wondering, how am I gonna, like, get a clear decision about my retirement and what I should do. I'm like, who, who can I talk to? Like, who can give me the right advice and, it's, and who could help me make this decision? Who's been through it before and things like that. And, you know, I try to get advice and opinions from different people. Um, some, some of it helped, some of it didn't. But, you know, one day I was just, before my last fight, fight week. Um, I don't remember exactly where I was. It might have been, I think it was in my room. And um, I just prayed and I told God, God, please, if this, is this, if this is the right decision for me and this is what I should do, is just retire and walk away from the sport. Um, like, give me a sign. Like, let me know. Because after every fight, the last three or four fights, I was walking out of the ring still confused. Like, no, I, I should keep going. You know, I, I wanted to become undisputed. That's always been a goal of mine. I wasn't going to let myself down. I wasn't going to let my team down. I wasn't going to let top rank down. I was going to become undisputed no matter what, no matter what I was going through. Um, and I told God, God, please, just give me a sign. I'm fucking tired of this, you know? I'm tired of just feeling this way, feeling confused. And um, after my last fight, when, as soon as I walked out of the ring and I was walking back to the, under the, through the tunnel to the dressing room, um, I just felt like this peace that I've never felt before. And I, it's like I could hear God telling me, that's it, you're done. And it was so clear to me, so clear. When you sat there and there's that shot of you in the locker room, right? With all the belts on you, you wore the Kobe jacket all, you know, fight week long. Leading up to the fight, it was job's not done. Job's not done. And then... You remember what you said when you sat there in that chair? Job's finished. <laughs> yeah, job's finished. And honestly, in that moment, like, I felt nothing. I felt no excitement. I felt no happiness. I felt no urge to continue because I feel like the answer was there as soon as I walked out of the ring. Out of the ring. Um, I, I knew that walking away would be the best thing for me. My, my trainer gets so frustrated because we're in the gym and we do our routine of all the workouts that we normally do. And the past few years, the, the past few years, I'm like, I can't do that. <laughs> like, I, I physically can't do that. So he has to change it up and do something else to where my back's able to handle um, the workout. Um, and now my, with my finger not being 100%, my right hand, now we have to not use it as much in sparring or just, you know, throw it but not hard or when we're working the mitts he has to use a paddle with my right hand instead of a mitt because it's too hard if there's one person who has known for a while it's my trainer dean that if i physically just 
couldn't continue anymore and I couldn't I couldn't be I couldn't promise that I'd be a hundred percent on fight night and, I, and I've been that way for the past maybe four fights where I haven't been a hundred percent imagine if I was a hundred percent shit <laughs> like yeah these these girls definitely had something to worry about but nobody even knows that I wasn't a hundred percent I was probably 40% me fighting and winning. You alluded to it a bit uh, in the fight life, and if anybody hasn't seen that, could you just explain a little more about physically the injuries that you were going through? Yeah, since I was um, a teenager, um, I've had scoliosis, so my lower back, my, my spine is curved like this, which causes so much pain, um, especially with the type of workouts that I do and my style. It's, it's defense, it's footwork, so my, my hips and my back are constantly twisting and turning that's every single day in the gym every workout that I do um, and it's been 23 years so of course I would spar 12 to 15 rounds twice a week sometimes three times a week and I told Dean I, I would tell Dean like man my, I, I can't physically like I couldn't even get out of bed my back was just so stiff and just so much in so much pain and I go to the chiropractor three times a week, sometimes four times a week, uh, during my last camp especially, doing a bunch of physical therapy, constantly getting massages, but it's fine for a couple of hours after that, but the next day, as soon as I go to the gym and work out, back to the same thing again. And um, my right hand, uh, which I injured in the second round of my fight last July, uh, my tore ligament and had a couple of fractures in there. So um, there was weeks where I couldn't even make a full fist and close my right hand. So um, going into my last fight, um, it, it sucks to not be confident in your right hand and be able to throw it, <laughs> especially if it's also part of the game plan as well. You can't throw right hands, can't throw overhand rights. I was throwing them, but at the same time, it's and mentally you know that it's gonna hurt when you land, so it stops you from fully throwing it with full power and full force. And um, yeah, you know, I, I wanna give my fans and my team and top rank my best performances, and I wanna promise that I'll always be at my best, and I'm such a winner and so competitive, and if I, if I can't do that, then I'm only hurting myself. So where do you find it in you to battle through injury, depression, anxiety, the stresses of being a professional athlete, weight cuts, to still continue to step into the ring and perform the way that you do? I think it's my drive and my will to want to win and want to be the best. That kind of just gets me through all of that. Just wanting it so badly. Let's shift gears for a moment. You talked about some of the low parts. What are some of the things that stand out to you that make you smile in your career when you look back? Have you had a chance to do that yet? About the things in this sport that have brought you joy? Yeah, signing with Top Rank brought me so much joy. And uh, it's not even the things that are for myself. It's seeing my dad and my team happy. What does that mean to you, your dad? Coach Dean, to be able to take them along with you on this journey and then be able to deliver to them all the belts. What has that meant to you now that you've had some time to think about that? Everything, because we've been through so much together and they never, they stood by me no matter how difficult it was. And they believed in me. They believed that I would accomplish all the things that I have. And um, you know, it's rare to have a team that you start with from day one who believes in you. And even when there's no money being made and you're just thinking to yourselves, 
the hell are we doing? <laughs> like, what are we doing, you know? Um, they never gave up on me once, and they continued to just stay in the gym with me, make me even better. What was the reaction like when you told them that you're ready to hang up the gloves? <sighs> um, my team was so supportive and so understanding. Yeah, I know it was difficult, the most difficult for my dad because um, it's been his life. It's been something that saved his life, you know? So um, I know it was difficult for him, but at the same time, he was just very understanding because I think he knows, he sees how, how much I struggle and with my injuries and, and other things as well. So he knows that it's been a difficult role f road for me and he knows that there is still great things ahead for me. So he was very supportive. Do you feel like you have accomplished everything that you set out to do in the sport? I think I've, yeah, I've accomplished everything I set out to do. Of course, there could always be more. You know, I, I've been getting that from so many people since I announced my retirement. Oh man, like, I really want to see you fight again. Like, there's so much more you could do. Like, you can move up in weight. You could become a new student at another weight class. Like, yes, that's all things that I've wanted. I've said it before multiple times in multiple interviews that I want to be undisputed in multiple weight classes, but I just can't do it. I can't continue. I mean, I can probably, not probably, I could beat these girls in other weight classes, still not being 100%. I know it. I can. But... Why would I want to put myself through that, you know? I want to be at my absolute best. Why was it important to you at 32 years old, at 26 and 0, as a two division world champion, as an undisputed world champion to say, I'm gonna step away right now? I think I've been pushing myself to do another fight, do another fight. I should have probably retired a, f a few fights ago if I really wanted to be 100%. And I know, there's, I know there's a lot of fighters who I know personally who have retired, whether it's undefeated or not undefeated, but have come back for more because fans want them to, because, you know, because of the money. Um, I could keep doing it for the money. It's great money. Thank you, top rank. <laughs> but I, I, it's not, like I said, the money's not going to make me happy. The money's not... I. I want to give my absolute best and I want to be at my best physically and mentally. And I've spoken to friends who are fighters who, when I told them that I'm going to retire, they're like, what? What do you mean you're going to retire? What are you going to do next with your life? My life revolved around boxing for 23 years, which is why I have become as great as I am. And that's why I've done all the things that I've done. But at the same time, I've always known that I'm, I'm more than boxing. Outside of the ring, I'm way more than boxing. So what is Sinisa Estrada in this next chapter? In this next chapter, people are still going to continue to hear my name, Sinisa Estrada. Um, and writing my book, my life story, which uh, will definitely be a movie and acting as well. I've been going to an acting school for the past year and a half, and now I'm doing it 100%, and I have some really exciting things in the works with acting. And Give me a, a high moment in your career professionally, and give me a, a low moment in your career professionally. Can throwing out the first pitch at the Dodger game be a high moment? <laughs> because like, even though that wasn't in the ring, that was like the biggest bucket list dream come true for me. So throwing out the first pitch at Dodger Stadium was the highest moment of my career for sure. <laughs> Undisputed was cool, but that moment was amazing, yeah. <laughs> what about a low moment? A moment where you felt like, I don't know if I can continue, I don't know if I can do this anymore. Yeah, there's so many low moments. There's more low moments than there is high moments. Just, just the beginning of my career, um, my first maybe one through eight fights, having losing hope so many times of women's boxing not growing and women's boxing not 
being noticed, not making any money, not being signed by a big promoter. When I fought and had these great performances, nobody saw them because I wasn't fighting on TV, you know? So, uh, yeah, the, the beginning of my career was, there were the lowest moments. And then as it got going, there was still, still a roller coaster. <laughs> what would 32-year-old Sinisa say to eight-year-old Sinisa looking back after all that you've been through? What would you tell that little girl? I'm so proud of you. You did it. You did all the things you said that you were going to do in the sport, and you're still going to do all the things that you said you are going to do after boxing. Is Hall of Fame something you think about? It's something that I didn't think about throughout my career, but now that it's over, I have thought about it, yes, and I definitely hope that in a few years I'm inducted into the Hall of Fame. Like I said, everything I do, like, of course it's for me, but it's for my team. It's mostly for my team, you know, my manager, my dad, my corner, Sergio, Panda, and then the best coach, Dean Campos. And I think it would definitely mean the most to, uh, to, to all of them, the whole team. So I'm excited about that day. What do you want to say to them now that it's done? And this may very well be the last interview that, that you do and the chance that you get to speak on your team on a you know, platform like this. What would you want to say to them? Yeah. Uh, um, wow. Well, first of all, um, to my manager, Gary Gittleson, thank you so much for taking care of my career business-wise and, but first of all, for caring about me first as a person, as Sinisa, and looking out for Sinisa's best interest and not super bad's best interest. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. I'm forever grateful for you. And my dad. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> everybody knows how much I love my dad and the relationship that we have. So. So thank you, Dad, for sacrificing everything for me from day one for the past 23 years. I hope I made you proud, but I'm still not done making you proud because there's so many other things I'm going to do. And to Dean, <laughs> Dean Compost, the freaking best trainer, gosh, unbelievable his mentality and the things he teaches and how much, just how much he's stood by me, stood by a female fighter who he didn't even want to train because he hated women's boxing and didn't believe in women's boxing. And, you know, I made him a believer. I made him change his mind. And I'm so grateful to have a trainer as great as him. And uh, I just thank you, Dean. Thank you so much for making me the best fighter that I can be. Not just physically, but mentally, trying to help me, trying to help me through difficult times. And for just giving me so much knowledge, not just in the ring, but music-wise and movies and <laughs> just everything. Um, 
I'm just so grateful to have in my life and to Sergio and Panda. Thank you guys for being so loyal and for just being in my corner and protecting me and making sure I could step out of the ring healthy and for forever just being part of my family now. So thank you. It's thank you to my team and thank you top rank. Thank you for making my dreams come true. Um. Paul Barum, thank you. <laughs> um, I wish I could continue and I wish I can do more and win more world titles for you guys, but I can't, so, but thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. There's a lot of little girls that I've watched you. You see them come out to your fights. They have the capes on. We saw in Fight Life a little girl that was named after you, that her dad brought her to watch you fight and named her Sanisa. What would you like to say to all those little girls? Thank you. Thank you to all the young girls and all the women who support me. Um, I hope I inspired you, whether it was in a small way or a big way. To my fans, thank you guys so much. Um, I wish I can give you guys more performances that are outstanding, but I just hope everyone understands everything that I've gone through. The 23 years of it being just a very long time. Would you do anything over? Would you change anything? Do you have any regrets? <sighs> no changes, no regrets. No, I'm happy. Sanisa, I know this was a lot for you and important for you to do one interview and you were candid with us. I truly appreciate you taking the time to have the conversation, say what you want to say, and I wish you nothing but luck in the next chapter of your career. Thank you so much. Yes, one and done, and I'm glad that it was with you. Uh, thank you for sitting down with me and just uh, letting me tell my side of um, my journey. Sanisa Superbad Estrada! That's how you do it, folks. World-class stuff from Superbad. I just want to tell all girls and all women in sports to always believe in yourself, always believe in what you can do, and always go after what you want. Undisputed champion super bad, Sanisa Estrada.